Hi team, just got a little video here on standard deviation. It follows on from my previous video on the topic where I explain standard deviation deductively. But I thought I'd come at it from another angle here and provide an Excel spreadsheet where I derive what I call an empirical proof of the standard deviation formula. So I'm just going to try to show you that it works in practice. And I feel like that might be quite useful to you so you get a sense of why we have to divide by this n minus 1 thing on the denominator for the standard deviation of a sample. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video, I would suggest doing that. I'll put up a little link right here. Or else, if you're already comfortable with the concept of standard deviation, then you can stick around as well. But essentially what I'm going to be doing in the spreadsheet is I'm going to be simulating from a population with a known mean. In other words, I'm going to know what mu is. So from the samples I simulate, I'm going to be able to calculate an estimate of the standard deviation. Now, this would be the formula for a standard deviation if we knew the population mean. X minus mu all squared, we sum that together and divide by n. But of course, we don't know the population mean in practice. And so what this spreadsheet will do, we'll sort of, we'll sort of cover our eyes to the true population mean and proceed as if we didn't know the population mean. And we'll see which of these three formula give us the best estimate or the one that's closest to this guy on the left. So you can see I've tried three different denominators, n, n minus 1, and n minus 2. And of course, you can probably guess that it's this middle one that's going to provide us the best estimate. But let's find out. And if you'd like to download the spreadsheet, I'll put it in the description of the video. So you can take a little bit more time and have a look at the formulas I've used. But I think this will be quite good. So let's keep going. What I've said here is that imagine let's take a sample of 10 students in your class and imagine we ask them to write down the final digit of their student number. In other words, I'm just trying to provide you with an example where we might have a random selection between 0 and 9. So that would be, in other words, a uniform distribution with a mean of 4.5. So the probability of getting a zero as the final digit of your student number is the same as the probability of getting a one, which is the same as two, etc., etc. So the expected value or the mean is 4.5. So that's going to be our known population mean. Now here are a hundred samples of 10 students. So here's the first sample of 10 students. Here's the second sample of 10 students, etc., etc. And we can go all the way across. And you'll see in the spreadsheet, I've got a hundred of those samples, which are indeed random samples, thanks to Excel's randomization function. So let's do this first. We're going to try to estimate the standard deviation using this formula on the left, because of course we know the population mean it's 4.5. So to find estimates of the standard deviation using a known population mean, the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the squared deviations from the population mean. So if I scroll back up, this is the numerator here, the squared deviations from the population mean. And if you look in the formula bar, you might have to go to full screen to see it. Sorry, it's a bit small, but I'm subtracting the population mean 4.5 and squaring it, subtracting it from these individual observations. Okay, so after I do that, for each sample, I'm going to find the sum of these square deviations. And then, of course, divide by 10, like the formula tells me to do. So this would be my variance estimate for sample 1, variance estimate for sample 2, etc. Now, they're going to differ because the actual samples differ, right? These are all random selections from 0 to 9. And if we have a look at the standard deviation, which is just the square root of these, you can see that I'll get these as our estimates for the standard deviation. So what I'm going to do now is take the average of all these 100 samples for the standard deviation estimate, all of those 100, and I get 2.8432. 
So this is my estimate for the standard deviation given these samples. Great. So now let's do step two. Step two is going to involve us trying to calculate these three different estimates of the sample standard deviation. But of course, we're going to need to go x minus the sample mean all squared and sum those together first. So let's do that. Here's the sample mean of each of the samples. You can see in the formula bar, I've just created an average of the 10 cells for each of the samples. So now what we do is we can't subtract the population mean. We can only subtract the sample mean because here we're kind of pretending like we don't know the population mean. So here for sample one, the sample means 5.2. And so for each of these, I've calculated the observation minus the sample mean all squared. And I've done that for each of these. Now, when I sum these together, I'm essentially creating for myself the numerator of the variance formula. And I can do that for each sample. Now, here's what happens. I'm going to divide this number by n, n minus 1, and n minus 2, respectively, which is 10, 9, and 8. So I'm going to get three estimates of the variance for each sample that I've created. That's sample 1, sample 2, sample 3. And you can see that as we're dividing by n minus 1 and n minus 2, as in dividing by smaller numbers, our estimate of the variance increases. And when we take the square root of all of these numbers, here we now have estimates of the standard deviation for each sample using my three different formula. So that is, if I scroll back up, I've now created these three calculations. So let's find out which of our estimates using these three calculations gets closest to the one we found using the known population mean. So I'll scroll back down, blah, 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 blah. So essentially all I do is I take the average again of the hundred samples in each case. And here's my standard deviation estimate for n, n minus one, and n minus two. And here's the standard deviation estimate that I got when mu was known. So my question here is which one of these estimates comes closest to what we might consider the best standard deviation estimate. And it's only the best because we know the population mean in this case. And you can see that n minus one, that using the denominator n minus one, we get the closest to 2.84 in this case. Now you might ask, why is it not exactly correct? Well, of course it is a random sample, remember? So the reason that I chose a hundred samples of size 10 is that any random fluctuations will even out over those 100 samples. But of course, it will never be exact, right? That's the nature of randomization. But just in case you think that, oh, this might be a peculiar set of 100 samples of size 10, if you download the spreadsheet, you can press F9 and everything will re-randomize. If you scroll back up, you'll see that all of my random selections get recast so I'll do that again. Let's press F9 and you see that we get a new random set. So each time you press F9, again, you can compare the true estimate down here with our three sample standard deviation estimates. And it'll always be the N minus one that gets the closest. So feel free to have fun with that. Download the spreadsheet, press F9, and you'll see that with all my pressing of the button, there's never been once that one of the other two options here that I've provided will give you a better estimate of the standard deviation or a more proximate estimate of the standard deviation to what we'd get if we really did know the true population mean. So yeah, hope that makes sense. And I hope that sort of gives you also a bit of a feeling for how the standard deviation works, not just a knowledge, but a feeling of how it works. And I think that's almost just as important as understanding deductively how the standard deviation formula works. But as I said at the beginning, this is to be watched. This is to be watched in series with the previous video I did on standard deviation. It's a little addendum to that video, just for those keen amongst you to get the full picture. 
But my name's Justin Zeltzer. I run a statistics website called zstatistics.com where I put all of this stuff up. And I also do a podcast called Jeremy Zion. If you're keen to keep in touch, check out the website or you can comment on this video as well. I do read all the comments and respond to the non-abusive ones. Although I haven't got much abuse on this channel, truth be told. Statistics folk tend to be good-natured. But yeah, I'll see you around.